You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. I am super happy to be making this because... Let's be honest, I've been putting it off for some time. If you are a long-time podcast listener, as many of you are, you've probably been thinking, where is he? Maybe I'll dive back into the archive and listen to one of the other episodes that he's put together. But you've probably been looking for some new content. Well, guess what? Today is your lucky day because this is episode 255. First of all, if you're new to the podcast, please head on over to anxietypodcast.com where you can get yourself the End Anxiety Toolkit, and you can also get yourself uh, a copy of my five-week course, which loads of people have been downloading lately, so get involved in that. And it's just a series of audios and videos and things to start getting you moving in the right direction, as I always say, things to for you to ponder um, in terms of overcoming your anxiety. So, without further ado, I kind of wanted to give you a bit of an update Um I kind of been, you know, if you look at 254 or whatever episodes, I sit there and I think, right, what shall I put out in terms of some new revolutionary content which nobody's ever heard of before? And I don't feel like I've said everything there is to say about anxiety and uh, related matters, but I've said a lot of it and uh, there's different spins on it and different takes on it. Um, But, you know, the the truth of the matter is I do enjoy doing the podcast, I enjoy making it, and most of all, I enjoy the interaction with people. Um, So I've kind of thought of all that stuff, and then at the same time, my good old, uh, I was going to say friend, he's not my friend, he doesn't know who I am probably, but somebody I kind of listen to and check out, Gary Vaynerchuk, he always talks about the concept of documenting versus creating. And I've been creating for a long time, so long that um, I've kind of got writer's block in the uh, auditory sense or in the verbal sense. I know you're thinking, how can we shut him up? Um, So I'm going to move to documenting instead of creating. I'm going to follow that advice and I'm just going to tell you what I've been up to um, I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to make it a very informal kind of show and, and just see how that goes. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you are interested in getting my updates and hearing my answers to people's questions, then, um, you know, please send me an email, reach out, post in the Facebook group, whatever you like, and uh, give me some feedback. So I'm going to tell you a bit about what I've been up to, first of all, uh, and some of the things I've been trying out in my life. And then, um, after that, I'm going to answer some questions that have come in to me. So if you want to email me a question, you can just uh, go to the anxietypodcast.com, click on the contact page, and you'll see my email address there. Or you can fill out the fancy form, and either of those methods will get in touch with me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to answer some questions for the greater good so everybody can kind of listen in to my thoughts on it. Um, but let me tell you what I've been up to. So in August last year, I started a new job. Um, I went from doing my kind of coaching stuff that I was up to to going back into the workforce. And at the time, um, as I told you back then, I was feeling a bit lonely on my own, opening up the old laptop and looking at my emails and coaching people on the phone, which was great. Um, but there's a lot of gaps in between. And so going back to work really allowed me to immerse myself in an exciting culture surrounded by great people and doing work, which um, just I found interesting. I look forward to going to work every day. And that's been taking up a lot of time. Another excuse, another excuse for not putting out more episodes lately. But um, we don't make excuses here because if I wanted to do it, I would have made time. And so that's why I'm doing it now because I'm inspired to do so. Um, and yeah, I think I just was overthinking it too much, to be honest, in terms of trying to find lots of new content. So I've done a lot of creating, like I said, and uh, so now I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing um, outside of outside of that. So um, I've been playing around. I met this really interesting Russian-Canadian uh, chap on the plane recently, and he was we we're talking about this concept of minimum effective dose. Tim Ferriss has talked about this before, and essentially what it means is what's the the minimum amount required in order to have the optimum result. 
So we were talking about it from a gym point of view, and he was kind of saying, look, I used to go to the gym five times a week, and I used to do this myself as well with CrossFit. I'd be in the gym all the time, and then uh, super worn out and overtrained, it turns out, and then I gradually backed that off to three days a week. And this guy was saying that he basically, and he was 8% body fat, ripped, six-pack, and he was saying, look, I, go to, I work out for two and a half hours a week. I do two one-hour gym sessions where he does very big compound movements like deadlift squats, pull-ups, those sorts of things. If you want to know the exact details, send me an email and I'll tell you the routine I've just started doing. And then outside of that, uh, another two times he does high-intensity impact training, HIT, as they call it. Um, And that's where he does something called Tabata, 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 Tomato, Tomata, which I've talked about before, where you do, it's a kind of uh, high impact exercise where you do um, 10 seconds of rest followed by 20 seconds of whatever the exercise is, could be push-ups or squat jumps or whatever it is, um, followed by 10 seconds of rest. So you just do 10 on, 20 off, or 20 on, 10 off for an amount of time, 12 minutes or so. Um, and that was that's all he's, he started up higher and then he's dialed it back over the years. He's been following this routine now for about eight years and um, it works really well for him. So in your situation, I know a lot of you exercise, um, maybe consider if it's too much. Obviously, there's the flip side. Some of you aren't doing enough at all. And if that's the case, get out there, go for a walk um, or run or lift some weights or something. Um, but yeah, sometimes we do too much. We, we, we feel better. And this is, a lot of this could be associated with lots of things which we do to overcome anxiety and stress. Could be meditation. Um, could be, I'm trying to think what else it could be. I don't know. But exercise comes to mind where people kind of get a bit too much into it or we chase the rabbit hole or we Google the answers until we can find them. Um, but yeah, minimum effective dose. So that's something I'm going to come back to and, and tell you how I'm getting on with it. Um, and kind of, you know, see what the results are like for me. Um, this guy obviously genetically different, so we're all different and that comes into play as well. Um, you know, I've also, the other thing I've been playing around with is fasting. So I've typically these days been skipping breakfast entirely. I don't eat breakfast. I am still following a ketogenic plan 90 to 95 percent of the time. That's how I eat. I I don't eat carbohydrates and I feel better on that. I do believe that there is more and more stuff coming out about how um, eliminating carbohydrates or eating very low carbohydrates reduces inflammation in our systems and um, has lots of knock-on effects why it is linked to a decrease in things like Alzheimer's and dementia and depression and anxiety and all these um, neurological conditions which are caused by food I think it's just going to get proved out more and more over time so watch this space for more on that and anyway I've been I normally skip breakfast and then if I get busy at work or just with life I'll skip lunch as well and I'll just have like a proper nice dinner and put more effort into one meal instead of trying to eat three um, so yeah something to think about I'll probably do a show specifically on fasting at some point to, to get into it in a bit more detail um, because there was a time recently where I did three days in a row, which was really interesting. Um, and kind of how I felt throughout that process, uh, kind of ebbs and, ebbs and flows of energy and headaches and all the rest of it. Not, um, not recommended if you're in the midst of anxiety at the moment, but certainly something for like longevity and overall feel good, um, stuff in the future. So I think, um, You know, I'm going to leave it there today. I would say if you have questions, please send them in to me. I'm going to answer some. I'll do another one of these next week or maybe before, see how I'm feeling. Um, I'm really enjoying my life at the moment and my situation. And um, yeah, I'm excited to share more of it with you and and continue. It also inspires me to keep taking good care of myself. So I think there's a vested interest in continuing this conversation. So thank you for listening. Feel free to shoot me an email with your question. I will talk to you soon. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.